This is totally and completely for sure 100% my favorite piece I've ever done. Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher and welcome to day 11 of the 12 days of Flipmas. We have got a really awesome and fun, never before seen on this channel furniture flip for you guys today. So be sure and stick around to see the final result. I found this dresser along with the tall boy and one night stand on Facebook Marketplace for like $300 and I talked him down to giving me the set for $200 if I could pick it up right away, which of course we went right there. So we loaded everything up and I've decided that I want to split apart the set. Sometimes I like to keep everything together, but this particular time I am gonna be splitting them apart because I have the perfect idea for this dresser and I cannot wait to try it out. I am going to remove the hardware before cleaning. So the hardware that is currently on the dresser is not original to the piece. It's just some store-bought hardware that the previous owner put on. As you can see, there are actually two holes. So this is another situation where this size hardware is going to be very, very difficult to find because this is more of a mid-century style dresser. Therefore, it's gonna have more mid-century style um, hardware. Unfortunately, they didn't have the original hardware anymore, um, but that's okay. I'm going to be filling these holes with Bondo later on in the video. Also, as you can see, this dresser right or this middle drawer right here is a little bit finicky and it needs to be repaired down on the drawer slide. So luckily in day 10, I did a little bit of experimenting and I was able to fix that drawer. So I'm hoping that I'm also gonna be able to fix this drawer. When we got there is when they told me that it was broken. So I didn't know that originally, but I think I would have gone for it anyway. Again, I just have this amazing idea with this dresser. Next up, I'm gonna grab my simple green and clean. As I'm cleaning, I'm also going to be taking the drawers out and marking them. That way I know exactly where they go when I go to put them all back in there. All right, everything is now clean. So the next step is that I am going to be taking a look at all of the repairs that need to be done so we can get all that figured out before moving on. So right here, my main issue of this dresser is that there is some veneer that is peeling up. So there's two ways that this could be fixed. The first way that this could be fixed is that you could take some wood glue and basically glue down anything that is peeling up and that way it will not peel up anymore. The second way you could fix this is by just basically continuing to peel off the veneer and then fixing it with Bondo. And that is the method that I am going to be doing today. So I'm gonna be peeling up any of the loose veneer here. Sometimes it will make the problem a bit bigger. As you can see, probably should have just glued that one, but we'll just be doing some Bondo repairs here. It looks like there was already an attempt to fix this because there it is pretty stuck on there, but just gotta get something to kind of Peel that up, scrape off that extra glue there. It's been taped and repaired. So this side is definitely gonna be a lot of Bondo here. But now that we've got all of the loose peeled veneer off, 
I am going to be mixing my Bondo, which there's two different types of Bondo. There is the all-purpose putty or there is the wood, wood filler style. It really doesn't matter which one you grab because they're both going to do the same thing in the end. The other thing with the Bondo is that you don't want to mix too much too fast because it will harden quite quickly. So I'm just gonna be starting with tiny amounts and get my cream hardener to harden the Bondo as I apply it. I'm gonna kind of do it in sections. That way I'm ready to go immediately. So there's three little sections there. Take my cream hardener and harden one of the sections. stop messing with this first application so that it can do its job and harden and then in the meantime we're gonna move over to the drawer to fix that slide so here's where the slide glide is broken I'm not sure the difference between I know the difference but I don't know which ones which so either the slide or the glide or the guide or the slide whichever one this is broken as you can see and it's not really repairable because it's missing this whole section here so I was like perfect I have a part that will replace that but then when I grabbed this one and I tested to see if it would also slide well on the glide guide that's on there I tried it and it is unfortunately too small so it won't glide nicely so then I was like well that's all right because I do have this part of the combo here that does slide in there perfectly so I'm gonna be replacing both parts I know that it's not gonna be matching the rest of them but at least it will allow the drawer to slide a lot better than it does currently so I'm gonna remove these pieces here and then I will attach those pieces with some wood glue Okay, so before I glue this in though, I'm gonna remove this part and that way I make sure that everything is gonna line up because the other one was kind of sunk down a bit. So I just wanna make sure that everything's gonna slide correctly once we get it all attached. So the new drawer slide, if I put it in the exact same spot as the old one, it's too tall to allow the drawer to slide in correctly. So I'm trying to figure out how I am going to do this because right now it's not working how I thought it was gonna work. Uh, they will, they should be okay. If you glue all of them together and down to that and then um, on the bottom of this. Um, I don't know how to even tell if this would even work. Here, they can put that inside of the drawer first and then put it on there. Yeah, it's because in the back it goes up right now. Mm -hmm. Still, so. mm -hmm. if you get it done right, it should it could work. <laughs> should work. So I need to cut this. So this isn't necessarily the way that I wanted to have to do this, um, but I am going to be adding shims basically to the bottom of the drawer slide that I am installing. So we're gonna be using some wood glue and some shims. I'm just using some popsicle sticks or these stir sticks that I use. They're solid wood, so it will hold up just fine and I'm just gonna be putting them underneath this guide here just to elevate it a tad bit because 
If I put it up top here on this piece of wood, it's too tall to go in when I put the drawer in. So I had my dad come out and I, we kind of talked through some things and we think that this is going to work just fine and it'll still be, it'll still be holding its integrity to the fullest once everything dries. Okay, so I do want to make sure that this is in the middle, obviously, so that it slides evenly. We've got 23 and a half. So that's 11 and three quarters, I believe. Yeah. All right, we're gonna start gluing. I will let this dry overnight and then I'll glue the drawer slide here on the drawer tomorrow when I can actually test and make sure that, you know, everything is in the correct spot. In the meantime, while that's drying, I am going to be filling some hardware holes with some more Bondo. This first layer of Bondo is dry. I will most likely be doing a second layer, so I wanna get this first one sanded down so we can see how smooth it is now. So there's just a couple of areas that need a second application. Um, so I am going to apply that quick here and then we'll sand it down again once it hardens. Now that the Bondo has hardened really well overnight on the drawers, I am going to go ahead and sand back the area here and then I'm while I'm at it I'm going to do a scuff sand on the surface just because we've got a little bit of roughness um, it's the finish is failing just a bit where it's kind of some of it's almost seeping up or um, just coming unattached from the drawers since this is such an old piece sometimes that happens so I want to make sure that everything is really smooth so when we go to prime and paint everything continues to stay smooth. So now that the Bondo is sanded down on the drawers and again on the side here, I am going to now scuff sand the entire surface. I already did that on this side here while I was sanding the Bondo. So the top, the other side and the front are what has to be done now. The top is not as bad with the failing finish as the drawers were. So um, on the drawers, I kind of ended up going all the way down to the raw wood, but on the top, it really isn't failing. So I'm going to just sort of do an actual scuff sand and not really try to go much past the actual finish there. So I am going to wipe back all of the dust that I created with my sander that is just on the surface. So I'm just taking some lint-free cloths and a little water sprayer just so that it will grip onto that dust and get it all removed. So it is time to prime. And as you can see, when I just wiped off that dust, it is very, I'm getting some wooden tones on my rag. So that means that since this is raw wood, especially that that is going to start bleeding through if you don't prime. So I am going to grab my primer and we're gonna prime every single surface. So this is the primer that I'm gonna be using. 
just the one, two, three water-based primer and sealer. So it's gonna seal in all of those tannins. And I'm gonna be rolling it on with a six inch microfiber roller just to get a lot more coverage a lot quicker. Before I actually get the primer on the drawers though, I am gonna go ahead and tape them off so that I don't risk getting any where I don't want it, which is on the sides of the drawers. Now we can prime. Okay, so we've got a little bit of bleed through on this first coat of primer. So I'm gonna apply a second coat and if it's still bleeding through, um, I'm going to have to switch over to a s actual like stain blocker. Um, but this one, it should seal it up with this second coat. Uh, so I'm just gonna go and do a second coat. For the base of the dresser here on the second coat of primer, I'm actually gonna switch over to Lily Moon's Eclipse Stain Blocking Primer in the color gray. This will hopefully help me get a little bit better coverage and block that stain. I'm also gonna be doing like somewhat of a dark-ish, not really dark, but a color. So it's okay to go with the gray primer. That'll help me get more coverage quicker. All right, another time to let things dry. Well, I've let this second coat of the white primer dry and it's still bleeding through. So the other option would have been to use the Bin Shellac base primer from the start. I didn't realize that this wood was gonna be so much bleed through. So I am also gonna go ahead and grab my Eclipse and paint these with primer as well. So my next step is to start wrapping these drawers. I'm going to be doing this really neat technique and what I need to do very first is make sure that none of the parts of the drawer that I don't want paint on are showing. So I am going to be basically taking a lot of tape and my tape with plastic on it and just really making sure that I get every single spot so that it doesn't even seep through. It's gonna take me a little bit, but it's going to be worth it and it's very necessary in the end. I am gonna be painting the base of this dresser with this color called Green Iceberg by Lily Moon Paint. This is their normal mineral paint line. You can tell the difference between their opulent paint and their normal line uh, by the color of the lids. So the normal mineral paint is gonna be black lids and then the opulent all-in-one paint is going to be the white lids just in case you have multiple of them. That is how you can tell the difference. This brush that I am using is just an oval brush and it is probably my new favorite brush aside from of course the zebra brushes that I also love using. But this just gets such a great amount of paint on it and then it allows you to just slide glide right across the surface with your paint. You can also grab these on the Lily Moon website. The coverage is just amazing on this paint. It's like you can't even see through where the gray is. So the method that I am going to be doing for the six outside drawers is the pour over or tie dye method with 
the furniture paint. So I've seen three other creators do this and do it very well and it really inspired me to try it. Um, Andy over at Andy's Furniture Fables, she has a YouTube channel and she is like the most amazing storyteller and really joins it in with her furniture flips. It's so awesome. So go check her out as well as refurbished ish. She is Erin and she has an Instagram account. She gives some great tips and she's also really, really funny with her reels and all of her content over there. And then the last one that I saw is Bria. She also has a YouTube channel as well as an Instagram. So be sure and go check them all out. They're amazing creators and they would love to have you over there as well. Everything that I've done up until this point has been straight from the advice that these three creators did uh, because they learned from the first time they did it. So I've wrapped my drawers and I've wrapped them really, really well so that that paint doesn't seep through. I've also prepped the floor because this can get a little bit messy. And then the last thing I did was I made sure that my garage floor was nice and level. So I'm not gonna have anything, you know, going really heavily in one direction. I'm gonna be using some colors that are gonna complement the base color that I chose. And I'm also gonna be throwing in some of the green iceberg color as well because I want to tie it all together. My base color for the pour over is gonna be white. And then I've also picked out four other colors aside from the iceberg that I am going to be using. So we've got Cozy Latte, we've got Ironstone, we've got Wilderness Green, and then we've got Cade's Cove Green, which I used on the Ikea set. Love that color. So we've got about six colors here that we're going to just pour onto the drawers. I've got each side lined up so that they can kind of go with each other a little bit. I'm not really, I don't want them to be exactly the same, but I sort of just want them to flow. I picked out a couple of the darker colors, but I'm not gonna be using too much of it. I don't want it to be overwhelming, but I thought it would be cool to just have some sparks of darkness. Um, but the most important thing that you need to do if you're doing this method is to kind of water down your paint, but you don't wanna water it down too much. You just wanna water it down enough so that it can you know, move and glide across the surface when you are using a blow dryer to sort of just figure out where you want all of your paints to go. So I've got my classic cottage cheese containers here uh, so that I can mix all of my paints with just a tad bit of water. All right, I think I'm ready to start. I'm a little nervous though. It's okay, it's new. This technique really, I feel like is a little bit hard to mess up because you're just pouring paint and there's really no rhyme or reason. Uh, it's just kind of like, putting what's in your head onto the furniture. So I'm gonna take all these down and I'm gonna start out with the white. Might not be explaining too much um, as I go, but I'm just gonna start pouring. When you're using the blow dryer, you wanna make sure that you have a cool setting on it uh, so that you're not like overheating the paint in any way. So I have a cool setting right here and I'm gonna hold that down as I am sort of just moving the paint around. I wanted to make sure to like leave some of this same color as the actual dresser uh, pretty visible. So that way, you know, it really ties in that I'm not just throwing random colors onto the um, drawers. But I mean, that was fun. I, I had a really fun time doing that. Um, I, I'm just gonna let that dry. I feel like it's gonna take quite a while to dry and we'll move on to this side. Okay, you guys, it's done. I had so much fun. It's a little messy job. So you might wanna wear gloves if you don't wanna get paint all over yourself. Um, it's kind of like literally all over me, but this has to dry and it is going to take a long time to dry. So I am gonna be letting this dry completely overnight because 
if you peel the tape off too early for this specific project, it will begin to peel the paint off with it because it's not gonna be completely dry. Um, so keep that in mind, but we're gonna let this dry overnight and we'll be back tomorrow to finish off this dresser. 24 hours later, it is dry. I kept checking it last night after I was done and this morning and it was still wet, but we got all the fans on it and it dried at least to the touch um, and well enough to, for me to be able to take the plastic off. I think like underneath here, it still, you know, has some drying time to go, but I love it. It is so cool and unique. But like I said, you can't really mess this up. And I, I wanna do this on every project. It looks so cool and I haven't even put it in the dresser yet. But it is time to take the plastic off, put it in the dresser, and I need to make a decision on if I'm gonna stick with the same color that I have on the base or if I am gonna go a different direction with a different color of paint. I'm really glad I went ahead and did like so many layers of tape because it definitely seeped through my top, top layer, but I had this underneath layer. So we're saved by this piece of tape here. Look at that nice, fresh line. Woo! That is why you tape, tape, tape on this project. I know I'm giving you guys a lot, but I, ah, I love it. Um, gotta decide if I'm gonna stay with this color, like I said. My other idea was to bring in the darker color. It's called Wilderness and I've used it once before. It is a beautiful emerald deep green. I honestly don't think I can go wrong with either color. I think that that would help it pop, this darker color pop a little bit more, but there's also so many other projects that I could do that with. So I think I'm gonna stick with this color, the green iceberg. I do need to do one last coat of it before I can do the top coat. That was my choice. <laughs> All right, before I didn't know what I was going to do with the base. I had thoughts of maybe taking the base off and adding legs, but I decided that I'm just gonna go full send on the green iceberg color and go ahead and paint the base here with green. And while I have it um, upside down, I'm also going to make sure and you know reach all of these spots where you can see it. Maybe you put it in someone's car, they'll see all of this um, but all of this space underneath the dresser. So that is another tip on all of your furniture pieces. I try to do it on every single piece. You guys might not see it in the video, but I do try to do it every single time. So that way it's like finished. I don't paint the entire bottom, but like just the edges here. I did go ahead and clean the base already. So we're gonna go ahead and do the first coat on it and then the second coat up top. All right, so now that the second coat is done, I'm gonna let that dry. And I am going to head back over to the side drawers so that I can just tweak them so they'll all slide in appropriately. There was something that I noticed, which I kind of thought would happen, and that is that the drawers are having a hard time sliding in once they are all the way together um, because the tops um, and sides are rubbing against each other and against the edges of the dresser. You know, there's a whole thick layer of paint which wasn't there before. So what I am going to be doing is just kind of smoothing this out a little bit with my sander. I'll probably end up taking away a majority of that paint, but I'll go back with either a white color or the color of the actual dresser and um, fill that in with just a much thinner layer, not a pour over method. So I'm gonna be really careful, go really slow so that I'm not getting any of the top, which is the most 
most important part of the dresser that you see from the front. I'm using a 120 grit. Because it's such thick paint, it probably will get gummed up quite a bit, uh, which just means like it's going to get covered in the actual paint, the dried on paint. Uh, but that's okay, I'll just switch out the sandpaper when necessary. All right, I am going to be measuring for some hardware and I'm just doing knobs on the six side drawers and then I'll do handles on the middle three drawers. So I want the knob right in the middle of each drawer and these drawers are 13 and 11 sixteenths inches long and eight and five sixteenths wide, of course. All this odd, odd math. So I've got my hardware jig here, and I think what I'm gonna do is just basically line it up so that we will know exactly where to put it. And I am gonna do that by using the actual ruler on the hardware jig. So we've got the height set. We're gonna do four inches from the top. And then we need to get a middle point here. are drilled, so I need to choose out the hardware that's gonna go on these six drawers. I don't wanna take away from the design that I've got going on here, so I wanted to do a little bit more of a subtle, smaller knob. So I've got three different options that I found all at Hobby Lobby, and luckily it had a 50% off sale. Uh, so if you're ever in the look out for new hardware, be sure and check out Hobby Lobby. Uh, basically every other two weeks, it's what I've sort of noticed, they've got the hardware on 50% off, which is the way to go because it can get a little bit pricey, but it is like more exclusive and it's very heavy duty and nice, nice hardware. So my first choice is this knob here. So as you can see, I would like to have some white in there as well as some gold. So this one's medium size. So I'm gonna put this one in the top drawer here and then I'll put the other two in the other drawers and we'll put them on there so that I can decide which one to go with. My second option for the knob hardware is this guy. This is very unique, never really seen anything like it. I'm kind of interested to see like how it's gonna be actually using it and pulling it, pulling the drawer out, but I like the uniqueness. So my third option is this guy. It is a circular shape and then it has just a gold line across the middle. This could either go uh, like crossways, up and down, or even diagonal, just depending on what I feel like. This one is a tad bit bigger than the others, so it might take away too much from the design. I'll have to see. Now we gotta decide which one looks the best. I think what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna drill holes for the hardware on the three long drawers, and I'm gonna be putting these bar poles on them. I got them to match no matter which um, pull, like knob I choose, that these will go along right with it. I think I know which one I like. Yeah. For sure. One, two, three. Comment down below. I am prepping for the top coat, the finishing touches on this guy. I have chosen what I am going to do for the hardware, but you guys are gonna have to wait and see. So stay tuned because it's gonna be so, so good. But what I'm doing now is just using a very fine surf prep rad pad to smooth out the last layer of paint here. So when I put the top coat on, it has a very smooth finish as well. All right, I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell's Satin Clear Coat. This is 
one of my go-to top coats because it really does a great job of protection. And then I also really like the satin because it is not so much of a sheen like a gloss might be, but it has just a tad bit and it does um, it does not yellow over time, which sometimes it is very difficult to find top coats that don't yellow. So highly recommend this product. I am going to be doing a top coat over every single surface of this dresser. All right, it's time. I am going to show you guys which hardware I am putting on there. So again, remember there were three choices. I'm gonna just go ahead and start putting them on. It's funny because these are the ones that I, at the store, I was like, eh, I don't know about these, but I'm gonna grab them just in case. because I wanna see them on. And I'm so glad I did. These are the ones I went with. Here is the final result. You guys, it came out just as I imagined in my head. I cannot stop looking at it. It's so mesmerizing. It's like one of a kind. Although there are other people that have done this method, they all come out so different and so unique. As long as you choose colors that are going to complement each other, it's going to just turn out exactly how it's supposed to turn out. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Did you guys guess that I was gonna be doing this method? It's so cool. I wanna do this on every single piece now. I'm not going to, but I, I love it. I can do this with so many other different color combos so that it switches it up. And I can also do it with different drawers, meaning maybe the next time I do it, I find one that it'll work out to do like all the top drawers or the middle section of drawers or something like that. I know I didn't really talk about it after the initial time that I was fixing the drawer slide, but I did end up getting the part glued onto the drawer again. And so the drawer slides in and out nice and smoothly now. So that is really great. Again, I'm very reluctant still to get pieces that have drawer issues because that's basically, that's what a dresser is used for. Um, I'm getting a little bit more confident, but I'm still gonna be trying to find the ones that are in perfect shape when it comes to the drawer slides. As far as the method and technique goes with this piece, I learned a couple of things. I think I would definitely focus on like one drawer at a time because I was finding that even after pouring and only working on each drawer for a about five to 10 minutes, it was already starting to kind of harden, not necessarily dry, but harden. And it was a little bit tougher for the hair dryer to sort of maneuver and push the paint around to the edges. Something else I learned and that I might do next time, but this method wasn't too bad, is to tape around the actual edges of the drawers. You guys saw me go back and sand down these tops and bottoms and sides so that it could slide nicely. I mean, in the first place, the drawers are made to fit exactly. So when you're adding layers of paint, it can sort of clog it up and then not be able to fit in there. So in the future, and if you guys are doing it, maybe put some tape around the edges so that you don't have to go back with the sander. Although I really didn't mind doing that either. Now for pricing, the hardware, the total amount of the cost of the hardware was at $35 from Hobby Lobby. That was on a week of a sale, but I had to get nine of them. And like I said, these are super high quality, highly recommend checking out your local Hobby Lobby because they've got some excellent choices and more unique um, even than Amazon um, of hardware than maybe you might find in other places. Also, I paid for the piece. I paid for the entire set at $200. Uh, so I'm just gonna estimate that this one, we'll just say the cost of this one was $100. And then the cost of the paint, top coat, primer, all of that combined, I'm gonna go around $40. I would say I use about half or even a little less of each jar of paint. I know it looks like a lot and like a lot is getting wasted, um, but to get this look, I'm willing to do that a little bit more. So we'll go $75 in with hardware and paint and then $175 total. 
So I am gonna be pricing this piece pretty high because of its uniqueness. It's also a Kent Coffee brand of dresser. It's under the Trojan line. And so I know that that type of furniture is very well made and it's a known brand. So that gives me a little bit of a leg up as well. I'm gonna be posting this on Facebook Marketplace for $900. So. Hopefully we get some bites pretty quick and I just can't wait to see what people have to say about it. So let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. Let me know if you would try this technique and if you would try this technique, what color combination would you choose? Would you do greens like I did? Would you stick with blues? Would you go crazy and do like red and pink, maybe even some purple? There are so many different options. Like I said, I'm, I'm excited to explore more and more with this technique. Thank you guys so much for watching this day 11 of the 12 days of Flipmas. We've only got one day left. So get subscribed down below. We are only going to have one more video in our little mini series here. I hope you guys are all having a happy holiday season and I'll see you on the flip side. <music>